When Carl Chappell's children were frolicking in the cold water creek beds of St. Louis, Missouri, decades ago, he had no clue his kids were literally playing in poison. The time they were doing that, most of that contaminated material that was in there was up top. It would be decades before Carl and thousands of other families discovered that the 15 mile creek was flowing with lethal radioactive material. My son was diagnosed with appendix cancer in 2011. And that basically was the time that we started really putting everything together. Stories courageously shared by families on Facebook led the community to begin investigating. People started getting diagnosed with cancer before 40, and these were very active people, very healthy, um, very healthy people. It just didn't make sense. It all goes back to World War II when America tested its first nuclear weapons, otherwise known as the Manhattan Project. Radioactive waste was later on dumped near the creek, contaminating nearby farmland. 18 months ago, Mary Osco was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. She's never smoked a cigarette in her life. This was part of national defense. The Manhattan Project was to, to um, get the atomic bomb so that we could go over and, you know, win the war and, and uh, defeat Japan and, and take out these cities. But we're still victims. We're still casualties of World War II. Nearly 2,000 cancer cases have been reported in neighborhoods around the creek. Among them, Angela Hebling's mother, who died of brain cancer at age 39. Her father has stage four throat cancer. And Angela herself has been deemed a medical anomaly by doctors. And I was diagnosed with pleomorphic adenoma. It's a, it's a tumor that's in your parotid gland. From my own research, I've discovered that that tumor is commonly seen in Hiroshima bomb victim survivors. In June, the Army Corps of Engineers announced that it found more radioactive soil in various areas, including this public park. Our main goal is to make sure that we can protect human health and the environment. And what we're dealing with is generally a low level contamination, but it does pose a long term threat and that's what we stay focused on. So right now, if you walked over a spot that has contamination, chances are it's six inches to several feet underneath clean soil. For Carl Chappell's family, that long term threat is very real. His father died of cancer at age 48 and just a few months ago, his son suffered the same fate at 44 years old. He did pretty well the first couple of years, but it was in, in uh, March of 2014 is when he really had gotten uh, sick and then it was beyond anything that they could really do for him. Uh, and then he passed away 86 days ago. The Army Corps of Engineers has spent 17 years excavating and cleaning up the poisons of Cold Water Creek. Yet so far, the U.S. government has done nothing to study the health consequences that this disaster has had on countless families. Marina Pornaya, RT, St. Louis, Missouri. Marina joins us now live to elaborate on the story. First of all, Marina, Really powerful reporting there. Thank you so much for, you. for heading there. Um, but Marina, victims exposed to radioactive material in St. Louis have been dubbed the poison children of Coldwater Creek. What type of illnesses in this small area are we seeing that make it a cancer cluster? Well, Anya, we are seeing such a concentration of cancers in a small area that it's absolutely mind-boggling. Now, keep in mind that approximately 300,000 people live in northern St. Louis. For that population, experts say one to three cases of appendix cancer would be normal. Northern St. Louis has 45 cases of appendix wow. cancer. Take a look at the numbers that we, uh, we have. According to a self-reported health survey conducted by a Northwestern University, professor, there is at least 184 cases of brain cancer, over 300 cases of thyroid cancer or disease, 53 cases of lupus, nearly 450 cases of autoimmune disease. The list goes on and on. Now, this survey that I'm, I'm citing doesn't even mention all the cases of colon cancer, non-smoking lung cancer, as well as, as the birth defects that have been reported. Now, most of these stories have been reported on a Facebook page, which now has more 
more than 11,000 followers. Now, we, we should also mention that Northern St. Louis is a middle class neighborhood where people are educated about healthy lifestyle. This isn't a community where everyone is eating fast food every day and drinking beer for breakfast. It would be very hard to blame this cancer cluster on poor lifestyle choices. And those people that I spoke with believe that their illnesses and the illnesses of their friends or their relatives are directly linked to the nuclear waste and radioactive exposure that contaminated Coldwater Creek for decades. Well, those numbers are quite damning. Uh, but during your time in St. Louis, you also learned that these individuals exposed to the radioactive material are facing medical barriers. How so? That's right. Residents I interviewed say one of the major problems is that doctors in St. Louis aren't typically expecting cancers from people who are in their 20s or their 30s or their early 40s. So when a 35-year-old patient, for example, goes to his or her doctor complaining of being tired or feeling some kind of abnormal muscle pain, physicians don't immediately test for cancers. Moreover, there's been cases of insurance companies refusing to pay for people who uh, in their 30s who want to pre-screen for something like colon cancer because insurance companies say that's too young, uh, that, that age is too young to test for that type of cancer. However, uh, tens of thousands of people that have grown up around radioactive waste believe that 35, year old is, uh, 35 years old is not too young to test for colon cancer. So there's no official state or federal system that is set up in St. Louis for early health awareness so the medical community can guide people that are coming to their doctors at such a young age uh, and being ultimately a eventually diagnosed with cancer. Well, Marina, St. Louis was, of course, the birthplace of the U.S. atomic bomb. Is there anything the U.S. government could do, according to people that you talk to, to compensate or even bring justice to the victims and families of those who are exposed to these radioactive materials for decades? There is. If the federal government gives what's called downwinder status to St. Louis, doctors and insurance companies will be instructed to give special consideration to people exposed to radioactive material. Downwinder status is a special program that was set up by the Department of Justice to compensate or assist innocent victims of World War II testing at, uh, and those that were around nuclear material. Now, other cities in the United States have received that status. St. Louis has not, and that's one of many things that the community is fighting for. RT correspondent Marina Portnaya, thank you so much for breaking all of that down. Thanks, Anya.